You ever get one of those moments in a board game where there are just so many details thrown at you and you're trying to put everything together, kind of figure everything out, and then you get to that point of the game where everything kind of just clicks and synchronizes in your brain. And you look around to your opponents and you realize that they're about to get wrecked. That is Aquaticopia. Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another long awaited review. It's been a while since we've done a review for this channel, but I am so excited to tell you about a game that I've covered before on my channel, but I realized that I've never done a full review on it until today. So, this title is going to remain forever in my board game library. That's how good Aquatica is. I've had so many plays with it across all player accounts. Two players, solo, three to four players, and at least, at least at the very minimum, 20 games played. So that's a little premise for that. Let me give you some quick context about Aquatica, but I did do some gameplay on it. I also did a tutorial on it. So I'll do a very brief overview and then we'll talk about my thoughts about this game. In Aquatica, you are a sea lord and you're trying to pretty much build up your kingdom. You're gonna be playing locations in these player boards, which are very, very unique. They have a unique sliding mechanism that you can just take your cards and just slide them through the player board, which is completely awesome. If this mechanism alone doesn't make you wanna play, I don't know what will. Check this out. You're gonna take one of these location cards and you're gonna slide them into your player board. And all these circles that you see here, when you use them, you're going to slide them up just like that. I mean, come on, when have you ever seen a game like that? Usually you'll see games where you're sliding cards underneath the player board, but never have I ever seen a game where you're sliding them across a double layered player board and you're actually using each row. That is incredibly cool. I'll tell you now, every time I bring out this game and as soon as players see like these slots for the cards, they just instantly start playing with them. That is called table presence. I digress, on top of using these location cards that you're going to buy and conquer and put them into your player board, you're going to be scoring points depending on a couple of different conditions. So everyone starts with the same exact hand of six cards. Everyone has access to these six characters to start with. And then since it's a deck builder, you'll be recruiting cards from the main board. So all these cards here will be cards that you can recruit from the deck. This is actually one of the end game conditions. As soon as these are gone and over with, then that's gonna be the end of the game. It's going to trigger end game as soon as this deck is completely gone and wiped out. And these are locations on the board. The second endgame condition is gonna come with these awesome little stingrays that you get. Everyone has access to four of them to begin with. They're double-sided. This one is going to show you the resource that you can use. And this side is going to show a specific faction. The factions don't actually matter. They're mostly for aesthetic purposes. So again, like I said, the second endgame condition is gonna be taking these stingrays and then putting them along the top of the board, depending on if you meet these conditions. So holding eight cards in your hand, having five location cards all filled up in your player board, all these five here. The third one is if you have scored three cards, and the fourth one is if you have uh, two purple stingrays, which you can score by gaining location cards. So some of these location cards, like this one, will show a stingray at the bottom. If you score this card, then you'll gain a purple stingray, which look just like this. And once you gain two of these, then you will meet one of the end game conditions as well. These are also optional. You don't have to score them right away because once you do, you're gonna be sacrificing your mantis forever until the end of the game. So in summary, this is a deck builder. You'll be recruiting characters or cards from the main board. You'll be buying locations. You'll be conquering locations. All this to score points, which you can use from your stingrays to score at the top of the board. And then either once someone meets all four of those conditions or once the main deck runs out, then that is going to be end game and the most points will win. That is Aquatica. Now, what do I like about this game? What do I love about this game? What do I not love about this game? Now I know I am raving a lot about this game, but let me tell you this. It is a really, really good game. I love this game so much and it is not, this video is not a sponsored review. So point number one that I wanted to make. The combo building in this game is insane and it is so, so satisfying. Let me show you an example turn. I just made this up in like 45 seconds. Okay, so watch this. Let's say on my turn, I want to play Sea Lord. Sea Lord is going to allow me to buy a location card and also allows me to gain one gold. Now, the reason why that's important is because currencies in this game are not physical currency. You have a temporary set of currencies on your turn and it's either gold or it's conquest, which is denoted by a red trident symbol. Okay, so I'm gonna gain one gold and buy one location card. So right now I have one gold in my stockpile. And then on my player board, you'll see here that I have access to two gold. So I'm gonna scroll that up. That's three gold and I'm gonna use this one. That's four gold. You can use, you can slide all these cards only once per turn. So that's four gold. I'm gonna go ahead and buy 
this one. I'm gonna buy this location for four gold and I'm gonna slot it right into my final player board right there. And because I have five slots, I can actually sacrifice one of my stingrays. I don't really use power on my turn, so I'm gonna sacrifice this stingray and put it here. So now that scores me eight victory points all in one turn. And the turn's not over yet, watch this. So from there, I'm going to use my third location card. This one allows me to bring up or slide up any of these locations all the way to the maximum. Since again, I didn't use power earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and use all this and slide it all the way up. This one's gonna score me nine victory points, but in order for me to actually gain nine victory points, I need to actually use this symbol. So that one's gonna allow me to score this card. Nine points, bam, now this goes into my victory pile. So in total, that just scored me 17 points on one turn, which is a lot for this game. And that is how involved and how many combos you can generate on your turn. Like, how cool is that? So that's one major thing that I love about Aquatica. Point number two is that the core of this game is very simple. All you're doing in your turn is taking one card from your hand and playing it. That is it. That's all you're doing, you're just playing one card from your hand. But of course, there are going to be multiple layers depending on how involved you wanna get with your turn. And also, I think it's really cool because it invites players of all skill levels to play. At a basic level, players just play one card on the turn. And even if they don't fully understand the game yet, at least they can generate that one action, which is just to, maybe they want to uh, recruit one character by playing Blue Water's Agent, right? This one is gonna allow me to recruit one character from the board. Simple as that, they're gonna take one, they can take a free one right here, and that's the end of their turn. But of course, like you saw earlier, it can generate way, way more strategy depending on how much you're learning the game, depending on how advanced you are as a board game player. I think that's one thing that Aquatica does so well. It excels in inviting so many different players of all skill levels to learn the game at a basic point, but really get involved with strategy and combos as you keep going with the game. So I feel like the more you play it, then the more you really begin to appreciate how involved and how cool the combo building and the deck building and all that is amazing in this game. I love games that do that where essentially you only have one or two actions to play in your turn, but it's not as simple as that. There are so many other things involved and you can just keep adding that on as you're playing and as you're teaching, if you're a board game teacher, uh, as you're teaching the game to other people as well. That is an incredible feat that Aquatica manages. Number three, this one kind of stems off the other things that I've already mentioned, but Aquatica, the gameplay itself feels very, very unique. I don't know any other game where you're taking cards and sliding them up in order to generate different actions. Everyone starts with the same amount of access to the deck. Everyone gets access to these little mini stingrays, which by the way, are awesome. If you're curious too, the uh, stingrays don't float. If you're wondering why I'm telling you board game components don't float, you might wanna check out my Instagram and all your questions will be answered there. But this game also gives you access to little mini resource boosters that you can use to not only trigger end game conditions, but also use throughout the game. So it's good because you can figure out when you can allocate resources accordingly. For, for the most part, there isn't much direct player interaction. I think the most that it gets to is just discarding a card. Like Meg, for instance, will have everyone discard a card. And that does come in handy towards crucial moments towards the end of the game. But for the most part, there is no direct player interaction, but I don't crave that in this game either. I mentioned this before in other reviews, but sometimes you have games where you crave player interaction, sometimes you have games where you don't at all. I am always, always for player interaction, but you don't crave in this game because the player interaction in this game make you feel like you're running a marathon, for instance, and you're kind of pushing people out of the way in order to get there first. That is fine with me in Aquatica. Now, I always like to end on a good note, so let's go ahead and talk about the stuff I don't like about this game. First off, you have king cards, which are actually optional modules in this game, a module in this game. So these king cards are mixed in, they're promo cards and also some other cards as well. But these, you can mix into your hand during the beginning of the game. Think of these cards as very powerful benefits. They can either be continuous or they can be a one-off effect. I like playing with the king cards, but Aquatic itself, I don't think it needs it. I think the core gameplay by itself is totally fine. And the reason why is because the king cards feel pretty imbalanced. It's very, very clear. Like I said, I've had over 20 plays of this game, many, many plays, and it's very clear which cards are imbalanced. So for example, Kyla Nimble allows you to recruit any character from the board for free, and then it goes back into the box. That's it. If you start out with this card, you can recruit any character along the board, even ones for five gold when no one has access to it. And after that, you just get rid of this card. I feel like Kyla Nimble is okay. And that's a problem because when you see the other effects, like I'm gonna show you one right now, it is insanely, insanely different and very clearly imbalanced compared to that one. This one is Xander the Usurper. This card allows you to raise a location once. It allows you to get a card from your discard pile. It allows you to unflip one Manta and score one card. 
And this is not a one-time effect. You can use this throughout the entire game. You see the difference here. Recruiting one character, and that's it, versus four actions on one card throughout the entire game. That is a major, major difference in power. Between these two cards, it is nine day which one you would want. One of my favorite Sea Lord cards is Adela the Liberator. So this queen allows all players to discard one character and then you can copy the effects of one of them. This is such a powerful card. I've won so many games with this one because you get rid of people's hands and then you get to, on top of that, use their effects. It's very, very powerful. And lastly, just to make a point on this, Herbert the Forceful, after you gain this card, you gain one Stingray, and this card goes back to the box. Versus this one, Theseus, pay one gold in order to copy the effect of one character from the ocean. Continuously, one-off effects and continuous effects seem to be very imbalanced. Like the ones that are just one-off, even if you're gaining a Stingray and arguably you have met half of the endgame condition for meeting two Stingrays, it just feels like these effects are very, very underwhelming versus the ones that you can use all the time. What I've seen from my experience consistently is that people that end up with king cards that have one-off effects tend to lose. So with that said, I do like the king-queen cards. It's just that the game doesn't really need it and I think it's just more so fun. If anything, they feel too imbalanced to play with them. So for the most part, we kind of just play without them. Sometimes we introduce it just for a variety, just to spice up gameplay a little bit, but I feel like just a core game without these cards are totally fine. Now that's really the only thing I don't really like about this game. It's honestly not a major hindrance because like I said, you can play with it, you can play without it. There, it's interesting to play with, but it doesn't need it. Now with that said, the two other things I wanted to mention is that I love the end game conditions in this game because it changes your game every single time. Every time you approach this game, it is totally different. Sometimes, depending on what's on the board, you can go for the purple sting race. Other times, you can just go for having eight cards in your hand. So the race to those end game conditions make it so competitive and fun. And on top of that, let's say no one's even meeting those conditions because we're all at each other's throats. Well, there's still a built-in timer with this deck that allows the game to still be complete regardless of the end game conditions set with the Stingray, the, the Manta Rays. And this kind of leads to the last point where, like I mentioned earlier, Aquatica is ultimately a deck builder. So because everyone starts with the same exact hand of cards, it's super cool to see how the cards that you recruit from the deck completely change how you are approaching the endgame conditions and where you're going to be putting Stingrays in different spots and which locations you're going to buy. That's what makes the game so variable, so fun, and so engaging overall. It's having this variation of cards that you can recruit. The ways to approach this game is endless, and I think what really hooks me to this game and what I found very, very fun is that you have to be adaptable in order to win successfully, in order to actually win the game. I think what really hooks me about this game pun intended with the whole seawater theme, is that you have to be very adaptable in this game. Even if everyone starts with the same hand of cards, it's your choice to pick out which cards to recruit early on. It's your choice to buy the location cards on the game. It's your choice to also uh, go for different end game conditions. And there's a good balance between them, right? Because sometimes you have games where there are too many player choices. But here, the amount of player choices that you have access to feels just right. And that is why I love Aquatica so much. This, I think, is the very first game on my channel that I reviewed that I'm giving a five out of five. This is without the Sea King, Sea Queen module. Just the base game, core game by itself. Number one, the combo building is insane because you're drafting a combination of resources and mechanics across the board. Number two, the core action invites a ton of layers of strategy. All you're doing essentially is playing a card in your turn, but this one action can range from being as simple as recruiting one character to just being this crazy turn full of action, sliding one card up one after another, generating gold, conquest, what have you, and it just makes it so satisfying to complete your turn. Number three, the gameplay is incredibly unique. I don't know any other game where you're sliding mechanisms and using the resources generated from sliding them up. Having that combo off your main action, so good. Number four, the end game conditions are so fun to approach each and every time. Because you have so many to choose from, each time you play the game, it really feels different and you have to adapt to the conditions that the game gives you. On top of that, I didn't mention this earlier, but you can actually change the end game conditions with these discs given to you. There are actually 10 of them. So you can completely diversify your end game conditions. And last but not least, overall, it's just really, really fun. Everyone starts off with the same deck, the same mantas, but from there, everyone's gonna diverge depending on their own custom strategies. Some people wanna recruit cards early on, some people wanna fill up their boards with locations, and some wanna grab locations with conquest. So I just really, really enjoy starting off with the same playing field, but quickly customizing your own decks in order to fit your own playstyle. Aquatica is a five out of five for me. Highly, highly recommend it if you haven't tried this game before. Um, that's also, by the way, without the King Queen cards. With these, it would probably drop it down to like a 4.5. 
Either way, incredible game. I love Aquatica so much. It is a staple in my board game collection. I, I posted recently this video about my board game haul and I've been looking for Cold Waters. I actually just ordered it online, so I cannot wait to get that expansion to add a fifth player and some new cards to the table as well. But that is my review on Aquatica. So let me know down in the comments below how you feel about this game. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And with that, thank you so much for joining me here today and I will see you all in the next video.